Hello guys, it's uh, Matt. Thank you for attending. I'm going to do another sound check. Um, if you, if I can hear a yes from everyone, if you can hear me one more time. Okay. Somebody answered as me. That's fantastic. Um, okay. Got it. Okay. Very good. I'm going to start. So, um, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody that came. Um, I recognize a few names here and I know a bunch of people came from different countries, different time zones. So wherever you're from, welcome. Um, and uh, today I'm going to talk about automation, automated trading. Um, I really like automation, and I, um, you know, I'm going to make a big effort to integrate a lot of automation into um, Optimus and provide as many services that we can along with this uh, area. So. Um, I wanted to basically give you my perspective on things and just educate you a little bit of, about automation. So not only you know promote products that Optimus has, really you know give you a little bit of background about the products, how they started, uh, my thought process, and so forth. And of course, you know I wanted to give you a chance to um, interact with me um, at the end of this presentation and ask me questions and uh, basically and also share ideas. Um, that you might have about automation and so forth. So um, basically, let me. I'm Matt Zimberg. Um, I work here as a broker at Optimus uh, Trading Group, also on the company. Uh, before we start, um, just to get the legalities out of the way. Um, okay, and everybody can see my screen, right? I just want to make sure that you guys can see my screen as well, my presentation as I change slides, right? Just put a yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Um, so what I wanted to tell you is that trading futures and options involve a substantial risk of loss. It's not suitable for all investment investors. Best performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Um, I'm going to leave it up so you can read a little bit about uh, the rest of the disclaimer that talks about stops that are never guaranteed to be executed exactly where it's intended. It depends on the market conditions. Futures trading is extremely leveraged, and um, and it's uh, my professional opinion that uh, you should only use risk capital uh, in futures trading. Um, we do not. Um, we Optimus Futures is not affiliated, or it doesn't endorse anything as far as methodology, newsletter, or any other service. Um, everything that we show you here, we expect you to conduct your own due diligence as well. Before you make any um, um, before you make any decisions about investing and so forth, um, Daniel, um, I see your question, but I would kindly like to start uh, the presentation um, and answer all questions in the end about Optimus. Thank you. Okay, so now that we passed the disclaimer, um, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, Deep Blue and Poor Gary. So. Uh, and I'll tell you exactly why I'm, I'm sharing this with you and why this is related to automation and so forth. So everybody talks about automated trading, but the truth is automation is done everywhere. And what automated trading is, is really a thinking machine that looks for market condition and so forth. So I don't want you to think that this is only applied in trading, but machines essentially are smarter than men um, and than humans. And they are because they they can process a lot of things a lot faster that we can and act on them. Uh, we have the same processing capability, but, it's, but we can't execute on it um, the same way. So the story with uh, Deep Blue and, and Gary, and poor Gary, is uh, the story of Gary Kasparov, the chess player. Um, he was the world's best chess player. And the guys at IBM decided to beat him in the game. So what they did, they built a machine that was called Deep Blue. So round one, he went against the machine, um, and the machine lost. And basically, he came out and he said, "Listen, I can beat any the machine any time, any place, or in, anything like that." Four years later, Deep Blue came back again, and basically, it defeated him because they made the machine Deep Blue faster. They considered every maneuver. I mean, in chess, you can um, have millions of combinations. And 
basically they integrated everything. So every time he made a move, the machine made a move, and basically it, it beat him. Um, and he walked out. That's the official thing. He walked out and he says, you know, I just can't beat this machine. And the reason that I'm sharing this with you is because I feel that today the world of trading is completely been taken over by um, by machines completely it's completely been taken over and I think it's sabotaging a lot of discretionary traders um, and it's making money in the back of many traders out there or amateurs and, and so forth because those machines they basically think really fast and, and, and they act very fast you know there's a question that I always ask people I always tell them define a profitable trade and the answer I always get, well, it's a trade that made money, but it's a lot more complex than that. A profitable trade is actually a trade that took advantage of some sort of um, uh, price where pricing is, if I could say it, you know, the pricing is wrong in the marketplace or it's not where it should be. And you have a set of indicators that tell you where it should be or the probability that it should go in one way or another. And that's what the machines do. They turn it really fast. You know, they scan those opportunities much, much faster than you can. And this is who you're combating day to day in your operation. Not to say that the discretionary trader cannot be a successful trader, but definitely today it's a lot more challenging than it was in the past. So let me tell you a little bit, you know, about how automation in, um, in trading started. And, of course, it started, believe it or not, in, in the 40s when in the stock market there's a lot of you couldn't execute the way you do it today but people already started as computers started developing and they started understanding the processing power and numbers they already started working with them um, at the time but let me take you to an era where it started being combined with execution okay so where did it start believe it or not when the Cold War was over thousands of people were unemployed in um, and in the in the defense um, area, a lot of engineers, a lot of programmers. So where did they all go work? They went to work for Wall Street. Of course, not all of them, but Wall Street understood the value of those people. Those people were brilliant, and they were able. There were occupations such as uh, real-time programmers. Those are not programmers who sit there and program. You know, they need to tackle issues right here, right now as problems occur and so those were a lot of quant people um, in that business this is what really Wall Street is looking for Wall Street is not looking today for somebody you're not gonna see ads for we're looking for the best trader what they're looking for is somebody who is best in statistics physics um, um, you know anything math PhDs in math and so forth and basically they just give them the numbers to work with and it could be applied to trading it could be applied in any other industry of course a lot of them go into trading because it's one of the most profitable business to be in okay another thing that contributed you know to um, automation is the dot-com uh, bubble that occurred um, as you know you know there's a lot of companies out there and a lot of them had discretionary traders um, I don't want to mention the name of the bank but back in the day I think it was late 90s. I have attended a friend of mine who used to work in an institutional bank. And at the time, uh, what happened was that his, um, I, I was in this operation and I saw tons of traders, you know, tons of traders who used to trade the NASDAQ stocks. When they all blew up, not even one was left. And so it's amazing that as the market tank, tanked, you know, they weren't able to deal with it. Of course, you can short markets. Um, you know, you can make money on the downside, but that, you know that, that everybody downside on their proprietary desks is just the fact that humans have a very, very um, hard, and I mean, it's difficult for them to, to deal when the markets collapse, you know, psychology and so forth. So a lot of people started going again into, uh, you know, considering automation and not having humans, but having machines and processors, you know, to take decisions. Um, following that, we had um, the um, we had the the collapse of 2008 and 2009. Um, after that, you know, in, during this period, and I'm not talking about commodity trading, but I'm talking about more 
asset uh, allocation, such as financial advisors and so forth. I've read an article that they were absolutely paralyzed during that period. So during the time that, they, that financial advisors should have been most, how should I say it, you know, most cautious with their customers, they were euphoric, just as them. And in 2000 and the end of 2009, when, when looking at hindsight, of course, you know, they couldn't advise their customers to buy because they were paralyzed, absolutely paralyzed. I mean, and I don't blame because they're humans, right? So here you have a market that went down 50% and everybody's shaking. And they say, yes, you should have this blood on the street and all the other, you know, phrases. But when it comes to real life, again, you know, human behavior, psychology, uh, fear uh, prevents us from doing it. So even today, we're seeing more and more. Um, I saw actually yesterday um, an ad for a financial advisor that absolutely it's all computerized. So there's asset allocation based on you know, computers. And I'm not saying it's a better solution, but it's definitely even in that field, it's actually starting to go towards that. Let's talk a little bit about um, the benefits um, of automation. Um, there's a lot of benefits, but basically um, one of the things that I like, I specifically like about automation that it has a method, it executes on time, it delivers results, whether positive or negative, that you can decide to pull the trigger or not. And the last thing is it's the psychology part, um, where I should say you don't have to deal with psychology issues. So you have a method that you can actually automate and see and backtest. You execute it on time, and then you, you see the results. Now, and of course, again, the trading psychology part of it. And the reason that I'm repeating it twice is because I really want to emphasize you know, every single field there, how, how important it is. Specifically, you know, when it comes to executing things on time, a lot of discretionary traders, they want things to align. They want all their indicators to align. They want to have, you know, sometimes they have two platforms or three platforms or software, execution software. They have different indicators on every screen. They want everything to align. Sometimes, you know, they just miss an opportunity because there's just too much thinking. The psychology part, this is the hardest part. When you're a discretionary trader, you really have to pull the trigger to take advantage of an opportunity. You don't have many opportunities, and you have to be really patient to wait for them. But when you do, I feel that if somebody had five losses, um, consecutive losses, it's very hard for him to pull the trigger, although he could recover. So what you see in automated trading results, when you see, you see months of ups and downs and downs and up, but essentially, you know, if you trade through all of them, you could potentially be successful. I find that it's very, very difficult in the discretionary side because at that point, your capital doesn't grow on trees. You're afraid to execute. So I feel that automation, you know, um, could really help um, a lot of traders um, making their decisions better. Um, the second thing that I want to talk about, can all methods be automated? And the answer is no. Um, basically, not every method could be um, automated because I do know successful discretionary traders that cannot automate their, uh, their method. And the reason that they can't is because they use certain level of interpretation in the market. They don't have, they can't put it in rules. Um, so the second thing is that the automation, it has to have rules, okay? It has to have the right po parameters. And the and other challenges that you have, when, if you're not a programmer, what platform do you put it on? What language do you use? You can use C Sharp, you can use C++, you can use Easy Language, Power Language, Python, you just don't know. And the hardest part in automation, okay, is also finding the right programmer. A lot of people are not programmers, but you know how I look at programmers? I look at them as translators. So you come to them and you say, you know what, look, I have a document here in English. Can you please translate it to French? Okay? So if you go to three people or translators, every single one of them will be different. And every single one will add his own style, the way it should be, and so forth. So there should be, in programming, you don't have 
um, you can't build a program unless everything is, in my opinion, perfect. So everything has to align um, for your method to work if you want it to work. And at that point, if it doesn't work, that's the, the hardest part. If it doesn't work, you don't know if it's just the drawdown that it goes through or the code was not done right or anything like that. So I find that the best programs out there are people who actually program their own. They've learned, their, they've learned the language and they've actually did it on their own. And if you can't do it on your own and you rely on others, well, you know, I just hope you work with somebody who's um, very, very competent. Okay. So let me tell you, let's talk a little bit about automation today. Okay. Well, you know what? Let me give you, um, I'm going to allow five minutes for questions. Do you have any questions for me before I think? Okay, I don't see any questions, so I will continue. Okay, all right, okay. So where is automation today? Okay, um, according to the New York Law Journal, this I took it from Benzenga, published February 23rd, HFT comprises approximately 60% of daily CME futures trading volume. This is Chicago Mercantile Exchange. This is where you trade your E-minis, your bonds, your currencies, and everything else. This, actually, this is what you're combating on a day-to-day, -day, and this is astonishing and quite dangerous. Why? Because this is your other side. Remember, you know, aside from transaction costs this and, and, and the spreads, this is a zero-sum game. And so somebody, somebody loses. And if 60% of, of the business out there is HFT, that means that computers are trading back and forth, back and forth, placing trades, um, able to take advantage really fast, and so forth. And this is who you're combat, combating today. By the way, I think that now, since 2013, I honestly think today even more than 60%. I don't know. I'm just estimating. I don't have any or anything. But judging by the volumes that are mostly coming from institutional, I think that um, algorithmic trading, HFT trading, are you know, taking advantage of, of, of uh, the market today. Um, and I mean taking advantage, I don't mean taking advantage, of, uh, taking advantage of opportunities that are presented to them. Okay, so that's, that's a something to consider. Okay, um, I don't know if you guys heard of a company named Virtu. Okay. Virtu is an algorithmic trading company. It's an institutional company trading its own capital. Okay, and in six years, okay, they had one losing. Day. So I got to tell you that, that there's a risk of loss in futures trading, past performance, and no indicative future results. Nor am I selling here Virtu. Nor do I think that we can trade with them. Uh, but this is just an example of a company that is basically day-to-day -day taking advantage of opportunities in the market. Now, I have to tell you this. Retail cannot imitate them for two reasons. One, um, the speed and execution that they use is very different than retail. It's much faster. So they do a lot of transactions, very small profits, back and forth all the time. And this is basically what makes them successful. But of course, they have a method to that. So there's two ways to make profits in the market. One is to find a method that makes you money. You know, it can be long-term, short-term, but, but execution and time and taking advantage of really fast is also an opportunity in itself. Uh, sometimes, you know, you have inefficiencies in the market, you have arbitrages, and, and time plays a really big factor in terms of execution. Uh, sometimes, you know, I feel, I see that retail talks in milliseconds, institutional guys talk in nano. Okay, this is this is the difference. Okay, one millionth of a second execution. We clearly cannot be there. Okay, but this is just to show you this um, that, that this exists out there. Okay, and Virtu is a very famous company. I'm sure that some of you have heard about it before. Okay, so how do you find an automated trading solutions? Okay, um, there's a lot of challenges that the retail crowd has and brokers such as myself um, to find a system that is good because for the retail a system that is good is a system that's profitable a system that doesn't have many drawdowns 
you know, um, and it's very difficult. So you go on the internet and you have all those people and they show you track records and everything else and saying my system is the best in the world and you don't know what to do and sometimes you buy and you're disappointed. Not to say that I did not make such mistakes, you know. Um, over the years, it also took me time as a broker to actually learn how to screen those people. But the bottom line is that, you know, um, there's a few limitations that, or challenges, I should say, that we all encounter. One is a pathetical track record. Two, you can't see the execution uh, live, okay? And the ability and the other challenge, even if you find somebody says, oh, I have the best automation and you load it into your computer and you're all excited because you're, and then it pulls the first trigger. And the market is, you know, collapsing and it tells you to buy. And you sit there and you're paralyzed, right? You're paralyzed. You don't know what to do because you, it seems like you bought the system, the method tells you to do it, but at the same time, you know, you're kind of scared, right? Because, and the reason that you're scared is because you're afraid that it's going to go lower uh, and you're going to lose. Or the other one, you don't understand why it's doing that. So even if you purchase sometimes a system from a third party, unless you know what drives the system, sometimes it's very hard to execute it, even if it's a good method and so forth. So um, one of the things that we have done here is introduced in a new product that's called iSystems. And I want to show you how it works, okay? And basically, before I do it, I want to go over some points. So um, the iSystem uh, gives you the ability to uh, check hypothetical track record, tracked track record, which means from the minute it was submitted, and live, okay? So you can actually see uh, live, which means the cost, the it it's actually has a real life track record with customers funds in it you have the ability to see live pnl as it executes you can see the profits and losses you have the ability to choose systems that match your specific um, risk tolerance and criteria and then you can add systems remove systems um, anything you want but it gives you full control so I wanted to basically show you uh, the product, and uh, we can go from there and then answer any questions. Anyway, this is, um, I apologize, this is the URL, optimusfutures.isystems.com, okay? So I can just uh, let me take it here, and I'm going to drop it. Let me see if I can, I don't know where I can, uh, not sure where to post it to. Oh, here, there we go, okay. So this is the one. Okay. Okay. Let me actually. You know what? I probably need to do this whole thing. So it would be. Okay. There you go. Okay. Uh, that still didn't make it. Okay. Um. Anyway, that's the one of the futures. Let me go over this a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna. There's a system here that I'm, I'm going to choose a specific system, and I'm going to show you how it works. So you can basically, guys, um, see it. Okay, so I'm going to pick a system here called um, it's called PSI Russell 30. Okay, and uh, I'm going to show you the track record here. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you about this. Okay, there's three components here to this thing. Okay, the first component is the hypothetical component. This is all the white figures. Okay. Now, I have to tell you another thing, which is really, really important. The way this thing works is that these results are not reported by the system vendor, meaning that, you know, there's a lot of guys out there who say, oh, well, here's my track record. This company actually takes their um, program, it uploads it to the computer, and this is the result that it spits, right? So it's not the vendor that actually provides the figures because the vendor can say, I'm making a lot of money. But you want to have, a, you know, you just want to take the parameters and have kind of an objective view on that, and that's what it provides. So basically here you have all the hypotheticals. Um, all the white is completely, it's the back-tested results, right? And I'm not saying that looking at back-tested results is a bad thing. And I'm not saying that hypothetical track records 
are bad, but there's an inherent problems which, with hypothetical track records. Specifically, if it's a lot of trading and day trading, that's an issue. Not a lot of systems can, because of the frequency of trading, not a lot of machines can backtest it right. Uh, not a lot of machines can, can um, you know, um, have something called inside bar, which they don't know if a profit or a loss uh, was done. But if it was done right and the system is not one that's frequently traded, my, my opinion is that hypotheticals will have more value. So I don't want to negate hypothetical value, but you have to go sometimes beyond that to see live results. Um, you, it's better to go and see live results, of course. So the yellow part after the back tested here is the tracked one, which means there were no customers, but you know we started tracking the system. Anything in green shows execution of customers. Okay. Now, and you can see the slippage that can occur. That that you know. So some customers may have a little bit more, a little bit less, but this is the slippage. Okay, which is very reasonable. So this is basically what you're getting. And now you have three figures over here. You have backtested, tracked, and live trading. Okay? This figures, they take everything into consideration out of every system out there. Okay? So for example, this system charges seven fifty per side, commissions, monthly seventy dollar transaction, which will be per one lot. And it takes everything into consideration. So if you have a, a profitable month, it will remove the 70. And if it has um, a negative month, it will add the 70 to reflect right figures. Um, other things that you can see here is the suggested capital is 20,000. You can see here required capital is 7,000, which means if the system ever drops below to 7,000, then you're out. Um, you can see here the worst drawdown that has occurred. Now, let me tell you a little bit about drawdowns, okay? Which is really important. It doesn't matter if you're trading automation or, or you you have a managed account or you have a discretionary or anything like that. Um, I understand it's very difficult to go through drawdowns. It's the it's the period where you have to make a decision: do you cut your losses here? And sometimes you have this greed factor that says, stay in, you can recover. And <clears throat> looking at historicals you can versus hypotheticals, it's really important to realize those things. I'll give you a very specific example, OK? So you go through here, and you see that there's a $965 loss. Here, there's 1226 and so forth. So basically, you have to know what sort of drawdowns you're looking to have. How 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 many of them can happen? Look at this period in 2002. Okay, this this is where during hypothetical. But nevertheless, look, you had one, two, three, four, five losing months, right? And it's very hard. And if you started in the beginning, you had two months, then you recovered, you were happy, you had well, it's a non-event, and then you had May, and then you go through all this. And this is the period where everybody's like, you know what? I can't take it anymore. I have to get out. And it's very hard to stay during that period. So it's important to know, looking at the system, when you if you decide to use the service through us, um, you know, one thing that we do with every single customer is guide them through the worst period. So for example, here we see that the worst drawdown was 47.86. Now, in real life, you can still go through a bigger drawdown. You can. You can say maybe it will go to six, seven thousand, but this is where you use your discretion. You say, look, if the worst was forty-seven hundred, like here, forty-eight hundred, maybe I'll give it six thousand. Okay. Since the system started trading, it's fifteen thousand. It's live, and since it started tracking, it also fifteen thousand. So basically, um, you have you know good positive results. Another thing that um, a lot of people look at is sharp ratio. Sharp ratio measures how much leverage you use. Um, some people, and this is just my opinion, any figures above one are better than figures below one. So 1.34 is a good figure. Uh, it means that it uses leverage in a very smart way. So you can have two guys that come to you and say, look, we made 15% return. And somebody says, you know, we used three contracts to trade. And the other guy would say, I use one contract to trade. Obviously, using one contract, he uses less leverage, which is one of the things that sharp ratio measures. 
Um, basically, you have best session, you have winning sessions, you have all those numbers that you can take a look at. Um, and also, again, you go through the figures here, right? And you look at the returns, and you look at the hypotheticals, and then you look at the live results. So let's look at the live results for a minute, which are really important. Just because the system is profitable doesn't mean it will always match its hypothetical track record. But this is one of the things that you examine. One of the reasons I like this specific system is because in 2013, aside from this one that was tracked, we had a positive year of 5,500, which really matches something like in 2006. And then a year after, we had eight eight and a half thousand dollars, right? And eight and a half thousand dollars is very similar to something that we had over here. Now, just consider this. Let's assume, okay, that this was twenty thousand. Okay, you would say, oh, this system is much better, you know, than the real life is much better than hypothetical. Not necessarily. It means that there could have been volatility, or something would have happened that would have give it a lot of gain and this is and you have to investigate it so something that have something that gives a lot of returns uh, can also have a lot of risk in it um, but here specifically it's very consistent you know the months here are very consistent with the hypothetical you only have one month that is tracked well two this one I guess it dropped after but there's not a lot of reference to the track but compared to the hypothetical this the numbers look very similar and so you know this is something to look at all right, let me show you something else. Uh, let me just refresh this page. Okay, take just a minute. All right. Okay, here's something else that you can do, which is really important. You can filter systems. Okay, by the way, when you trade this, you have the ability to stop and start a system anytime. Now, let's say you go on vacation, you're like, you know what, I don't want to follow it, I don't want to watch it or anything like that. I have, I like giving people control, but if you are going to interfere with every move of the system and you're nervous about, you know, being in the marketplace, this is not for you. This is for people who analyze the system and for the most part, let it run. If they feel that something is a little bit, you know, if we have a catastrophe out there, Obviously, they have the ability to close everything, or we can close everything for them, or anything like that. So we like giving that control, but really not to the point that they will sabotage your trading, okay? So this is not for nervous people. This is pretty much you have to be cool and let the system do its own thing. But again, like I said before, you can see what the system did in the hypothetical side. So if you're going through losses, you can say, is this within reason of what went in the past and so forth. Okay, here's another part, which is really cool. You can filter systems, okay? Let me just uh, lower this a little bit. Let me see. Okay. So um, you guys can see here this. Pick a column. Okay. Um, oh, Daniel was asking um, a question here. He says, can, somewhere, can, can we somewhere find how the system actually works behind the curtain rules, actual method, and so forth? The answer is no, and the reason is because these uh, system vendors are want to sell you the system based on performance, and the last thing that they would do if they have a profitable system is to tell you, um, you know, how it operates. The only thing that it reveals it's whether it's a system that is a day trading program or um, or it's a swing, meaning whether it keeps positions overnight or not. Okay, so. I'm going to choose here randomly a few systems here with you. Obviously, there's a lot of systems on this thing that I will, would not uh, check um, or, or choose, um, but I want to give you the ability to, to at least um, um, show you how it's done. And of course, if you decide to use the service with us, I will um, help you, um, you know, choose the right system for you. Okay, so uh, we're going to pick a column. Okay, you have all those things over here. And if there's things you don't understand, it's absolutely fine. You know, you don't have to know everything, but you can choose of things. Okay, so let's say we choose a system, okay, that let's say that it's um, intraday. So you say, you know what, I don't want to keep any positions overnight. You know, I just want to keep it intraday. Fantastic. Okay, so now we narrowed it down to that. Let's go to another one, and we're going to say, okay, 
want um, some sort of a live PNL, right? Just not only hypothetical, but uh, let me see. Actually, I think here has clients. So obviously, this one has clients. So this is what we're going to do. Okay, and we're going to add that. And again, we narrowed it down to that. And then we're going to say, okay, now we want to have, um, let's say, suggested capital. Okay, so let's say we go from 50,000. Okay, well, let's do it 20,000. Okay, 20,000 all the way to 100,000. Okay. Uh, okay, it's all there. And now we can check, okay? So basically, you have a ranking here, okay? The, it's all full figures. I think this is, you know, where you can see it. So let's choose, let's say, this one, spin. By the way, the DEX is a very volatile contract, and a lot of people like to day trade it. So there's a lot of systems here for that. Okay, so here's, um, here's a contract, um, only 40,000. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You might say, okay, why do I need 40,000 and required capital is 5,500? Um, why can't I put less? You can. I, I, I would because, you know, if the drawdown is 9,000 um, and you have 20,000, I think it would be sufficient. So you don't have to put, but just remember the minute you go below that, you're out. So this is just something to consider. Another thing to consider is that you have others you you if you have let's say 40,000 you can combine it with other systems right you can combine it with other ones that could potentially <coughs> you know give you the benefit of diversification so for example here okay so the system was probably submitted in december okay so all those track record hypothetical and we or here we have only 2 months you might choose to go with it or not um, you might you can hover over this numbers, over this profit, and it would load up and show you everything that it has done, right? Shows you the entire PNL, how it came to that, the number of trades, and basically you say, okay, you know, I want it or not. This is this this specific one is indexed, so it's uh, those symbols are, um, you know, in euros, right? So in here they're converted to um, USD. And then you can say, okay, you know, I like the system or I don't like the system and so forth. Um, let, let's choose, an, you know what, I want to choose a system, or hopefully, that I wouldn't go with, okay? I'm going to try. Um, there's hundreds of systems here that I assist customers with, depending on their capital, but, okay. Um, so this is 35,000. Here you have started tracking from here. Uh, um, live so far. Okay, so... This is kind of mixed. You can decide yes or no. But look, you have here green, which the tracked and par partial tracked, partial hypothetical, you know, has done, you know, given 19,000. Uh, so far this year is 5,000. We know that the worst drawdown is 11,000. So you can say to yourself, Again, I'm just saying this hypothetically, and best performance is not indicative of future results. But you can say to yourself, you know what? Uh, since the since it's eleven thousand and the system is down now five thousand, not a bad time to start because potentially, I'm saying only potentially, you only would want to risk six thousand. Depending on market conditions, of course, you know you can lose more um, if there's drops or anything like that. But in any case, this is just a consideration for you to have. So you see the live, since it starts trading it live, it's 3,000. It is negative, and the track is 7,000. So again, it's one of those systems that you will have to choose, maybe or not. But let me choose maybe something that, uh, let's see, maybe has, okay, let's choose this one, Abramo, Abramo stocks. <laughs> okay, also trading something else. Okay. Okay, well, still, <laughs> I'm trying to look for something bad, but um, hold on. Let me choose maybe something, okay, mini S&P stone, maybe this one. Okay. okay, this is still positive. I'm looking for a system that has different hypothetical 
then uh, not if, if this one is not then I'm just gonna talk hypothetically about one um, this is kind of interesting also you can choose whether to do it or not okay so you see that this system is very different in its nature actually this is not a bad example okay let me see okay so this system um, had three losing years then had one phenomenal year then it had a very good year you know ever since but clearly three years it was losing and let me tell you something systems can do that systems are not a short-term thing I know you're saying to yourself I don't want to I don't want something the three years which is fine but it is what it is what I see here but you know what I'm not, I'm not sure how accurate it is but actually you know what I take it back this system actually hasn't traded it traded one month and then it never traded so everything was just a subscription cost we just didn't trade and then it traded here and here and here so during the times that it does trade but periodically there are months it just does not trade and it tells me that this specific system um, looks for very specific well all systems look for specific setups but this one is definitely a little bit more picky and it go can go through periods of one two three four five six six months of no trading so then you have to make a decision you know whether you want to you know be with such a system okay another question all these systems work only with Optimus futures brokers you also have uh, cash rebate program Daniel I think you'll have to drop me uh, an email uh, we don't give any rebates uh, or um, does this also uh, yes you can stop the strategy you can stop the strategy anytime you want once you're a customer we give you um, login credentials and with those login credentials you ba we basically show you how it's done you actually go into here um, let me show you okay you go into login and it gives you the system where you basically sign you sign up for it so this is believe it or not although these are systems this is considered a self-directed account because you can actually start and stop any system you want anytime we will of course assist you in um, if you want our assistance um, in, in choosing a tr you know something that's suitable for your risk capital but basically that's what it is do you guys have any more questions okay okay um, might be a stupid thing to ask um, no the only question the only I always say the only question that is stupid is a question never been asked so you can ask wherever you want I always wonder if there is any possibility of running a smaller scale home size if you will HFT systems that trade for a little profit on a server located in Chicago and get good results with it, the small money or is it only possible for big companies I don't know okay so basically it is impossible for retail to trade HFT and the story period especially with small capital let me give you an example I used to have a customer that actually send in his machine his trading machine straight to a server had to pay a lot of money to put it on the server right beside the CME and then it executed and then yet CME membership the because HFT there's two things you can't achieve the speed and then in the retail business you can't achieve the commissions those people have exchange memberships and do such big volumes that they pay pennies literally you pay dollars they pay pennies but that's only because of volume clearly and exchange memberships so basically it is absolutely impossible to run from home anything you you will need money capital and so forth um, yeah Sam go ahead ask your question okay is it possible to analyze correlation of individual return across systems and identify overlap between systems Chris that's a very intelligent and a very good question we're we're working you know I mean the the guys who came up with the software are working on correlations between the two but really the idea when you diversify four or five systems what you want to do um, I'll show you basically is choose different developers right this is what I think choose different developers okay unless you really like one developer and 
always systems are great. But, you know, this is what I would recommend. Choose different developers and clearly choose different markets. So here you have the DEX, here you have the CRUD, um, you can choose the DAO, you can choose eMini, you can choose NASDAQ, and basically, um, uh, you know, uh, go, um, go that way. And then when you look at the results, you also want to choose maybe time frames uh, that are different, maybe some that are swing and some that are day, so you definitely combine uh, the two. Are the orders entered before the market opens, or would you? Um, um, are the orders entered before the market opens? I don't know, and I really think it's irrelevant. Um, you know, when the market trades, it trades, and when it does, executes. You know, some of them have been through all market conditions, so I don't think it matters. But I don't know. Um, yes, Sam, you still. The question is, do you pay if there's a losing month? Of course. Um, you know, you can't, uh, this is a vendor that basically, you know, the idea here is to go long term. And so, um, basically, you know, you don't share the profits with the vendor. If you have a phenomenal month of thousands of dollars, the vendor does not come to you and say, oh, but, you know, I only charge you $70. I want more. So, it's only fair. You pay through all months. Yes. Any more questions, guys? Okay. Okay. Here's another question. Um, okay. So every system. Okay. So the question is, what type of data is used? Daily bars, minute bars, or tick data? Every system vendor sends his own set of credentials of what, how wants his system to be run. What he does behind the scenes, I do not know. Uh, whether he uses minute bars or daily bars or anything like that. So the data, the machine itself, a lot of those systems run um, on a machine that's able to read a number of languages. You know, they have a number of machines that do that. And so, for example, you can say a vendor can send in an or, um, a system and say, please run my system on a 10-minute bar, right? And somebody can say, Let's say on the swing system, I want it on a daily bar. So it really depends on the on, on the vendor itself. How do I add system? Okay, so basically when you subscribe to it, um, you can start tracking the systems, first of all, by registering in here. So you go to optimusfutures.isystems.com and, and then you can sign up. Okay, so you sign up and then, you know, then it gives you credentials to follow the systems. And once you are uh, a customer, you know, you will uh, basically we give you the user, the password, and you sign in, right? And that's what you do. Okay, any more questions, guys? Oh, how do you add your own system? Um, right now, there's just a lot of systems there. It takes a very long process to add your systems right now to this. So at this point, we're not interested in adding more, more vendors. OK, is it, is it possible to have a single trading account to trade multiple systems, sub account structure, all trading accounts separate? Um, you definitely. Okay, Chris, I, I really like your questions, by the way. I think, first of all, yes, you can. So basically, we assign different accounts um, to different systems, if this is what you wish. Or we can have one account trading, you know, a number of systems in it. So definitely, you can, you can do that, yes. You can have a number of accounts. Uh, and you can say, okay, I'm just hypothetically speaking, I want Magic to be in one account, Spin to be another one. Bologna to be in the third one and Orion to be in the fourth. And that's how you do it. Definitely. Okay. 
Um, is there an optimal path to compounded returns? Um, no, I don't think so. If there's an optimal path, you know, you have to choose every system. You know, you every system you look at, you basically see if you like it or not. Um, you use, you know, the criteria. The criteria I did before was fairly good. You choose clients. You can choose returns. You can choose the capital you want to trade, and so forth. So this is the best way to do it, in my personal opinion. Okay, guys, any more questions? Okay, my pleasure, Chris. Okay, um, guys, I'm going to stay here a little bit. Uh, if you guys have questions, you can call me. If you want to start the service, let me know. Um, you can also drop me an email with your phone numbers. I'll be more than happy to call you. And, uh, you know, my style is really never to pressure, but to guide people and really help them with um, whatever they need help with. Um, and one thing that I wanted to tell you guys, you know, there's a lot of people that I offer sometimes those services and they come back with, Look, I'm a self-directed trader. I want to learn how to do it by myself. And, you know, I tell them, listen, my goal is not to take away from your trading, honestly. My goal is not to tell you trade those systems because you're not a successful trader. Absolutely not. My goal is to say, okay, if you have risk capital of X amount of dollars, so you choose to do 25% of that risk capital maybe in your self-directed account, Maybe 25, you know, you have with another broker and 50 of your risk capital, you want to choose with something that has a track record. That's all I'm trying to do. And then, you know, I, I obviously get sometimes the ridiculous comments of, you know, you know, I can lose my money by myself and then so forth of people who've been um, potentially could have been, uh, you know, bought systems that didn't work in the past and so forth. And to that I say, look, the goal here is not to lose. Obviously, I hope that everybody is intelligent enough to understand that I don't provide guarantees. And I always say that futures trading is risky and leverage, um, you know, and, and so forth, you know, and past performance is not indicative of future results. But the idea is, is to go through some sort of a, a due diligence process, you know, for a better probability. Okay, guys, so uh, I'm going to end it on this unless somebody has uh, another question that uh, he would want me to share with, every, with anyone. Okay. Um, I, w I would, would be more than happy to, to, to uh, assist you guys, okay? Um, just, uh, okay. Let's see? Okay, okay, that's it, guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, what I want to do is, again, uh, go back to the disclaimer here for a second and tell you the trading futures and options involves a substantial risk of loss. It's not suitable for all investors, and past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to give you here also my phone number at the bottom. If you guys want to call in, I'll be here for the next hour. Okay. Uh, this is in this is in North America, and this is okay. Um, this is the local number, and that's it. Okay, guys. So thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. Much appreciated, and I look forward to uh, uh, talking to you guys soon. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back. Good to have you. Okay? All the best. Thank you, man. Thank you, Pat. Okay, now I'm going to close the session, so goodbye to everyone.